Hi, welcome to Online Advantage. I'm Professor Gonzalez. The topic today is accounting changes. So there are three types of changes that happen. The first one is a change in accounting principle. The second one is a change in estimate. And the third one is an error correction. So we're gonna go over all three of these. But before we do that, we also need to look at the ways we implement these changes. So there's three ways we implement the changes. The first one is the retrospective approach. That approach requires us to go back and restate the financial statements that are being presented. So for example, if you're looking at a, a corporation's annual report, and if they have three years showing on that annual report, three years on the income statement, for example, then all three years has to be restated using the new principle, as if we would used the new principle from the very beginning. So we have to go back and change it all. Then we have the modified retrospective approach. This change is applied to the current reporting period only. So whatever current year we're on, and then we have to do a cumulative effect of the change and adjust beginning retained earnings. That's the modified retrospective approach. And then the prospective approach is when we only implement the change in the current period and we don't modify the prior periods at all. And we have to make no adjustments to account balances at all. So those are the three different ways to implement. So as we go through the types of changes, I will identify if it's retrospective, modified retrospective, or prospective. First, change in accounting principle. Sometimes the FASB has a required change. And if that happens, then we have to actually look to the standard for guidance on how to report it, if it's going to be uh, prospective or retrospective, et cetera. Also, corporations from time to time or companies from time to time will do a voluntary change. When a voluntary change occurs in accounting principle, GAAP usually requires it to be retrospective. So remember, that means I gotta go back for whatever years I'm showing in the annual report or for our financial statements, if it's two years, I have to go back and restate the financial statements with that new principle as if we had used it the whole time. So some examples of a change in accounting principle would be if I'm changing inventory valuation method. Maybe I'm changing from FIFO to weighted average or from LIFO to FIFO or any of those kinds of changes. Revenue recognition. If I'm changing my revenue recognition principle, maybe like in construction using completed contract or percent completion. And then uh, another principle that could be changed is your depreciation, your amortization, or your depletion methods. When we make these changes, we do have to disclose it in the notes to the financial statements. We have to clearly justify it and give the reason why we made the change. So that is a change in accounting principle. Again, normally when it's voluntary, it's retrospective. And if it is required by GAAP, if FASB makes a change in our principles, our standards, and we have to go back and adjust, then we we have to look to their guidance as how it needs to be reported. Okay, then we also have a change in accounting estimate. Estimates are recorded we're using the prospective approach. So remember, that means I just have to do the current period. I don't have to go back with the prospective approach, just the current period. Examples of a change of estimate is changing the estimate for bad debt. When I'm doing the calculation for the allowance for doubtful accounts, I am using some kind of a percent, some kind of an estimate. If I changed my estimate there, then I would use the prospective approach. A warranty expense, when I'm estimating my warranties and in dollars, how much items are gonna be returned to us that we have to repair and how much that's going to be. We have to estimate that because we don't know. Useful lives on our plant assets. We know we have a building, we may think it has a 15 year life. We may adjust that, that would be a change in estimate. When we make these changes, it changes the amounts. If the amount is material, remember that means that it's going to cause, may cause the user to make a different decision. It has to be disclosed in the notes. We have to describe the change and we have to describe the effect on net income and earnings per share. So again, change of estimate, prospective approach, if it's material, it needs to be disclosed as far as to why we made the change and the effect on net income and earnings per share. Error correction is the last one. We make errors from time to time. If they are in the current period, we're just like, oops, we made an error. Then we just reverse the error and put in the correct journal entry. If you think about a journal entry, right? Reverse the journal entry, put in the corrected journal entry. And that's the most common errors that we make. 
From time to time though, we have a prior period error. The current period has passed, we're in a whole new year, a whole new 12 month cycle, and we're like, oh no, we made a mistake last year. How do we fix that? Well, if it's not material, so if we don't think it's gonna affect the user's decisions, then we just correct it in the year it's discovered. So when we, that next year, we decide, oh, we see we made an error last year, we would just correct it in the year of discovery. We would fix it. If it's material though, if we are concerned that it's gonna make the uh, users make a different decision, then we have to do a prior period adjustment. We do that by correcting the balance sheet accounts to make them the amount that they're supposed to be and then recording the revenue and expense, we have to record that to beginning retained earnings. Because remember, revenue minus expense is net income. It flows to retained earnings, so it would have gone into retained earnings from last year. And so that gets adjusted as a prior period adjustment. Thank you so very much. Please click on Advantage logo to subscribe. See you next time.